Here's Waltz. The, remember that it's the girls from the Barbie Consortium? Oh, sure, I remember. They set up a company that issues preferred stock. The preferred stock is offers interest at 2% annual interest rate, repayable in, at their discretion, Becky's or uh, Austrian money. At, this is after they get to Austria. It's at the Becky's discretion. So, at the, so they so buy bearer bonds that pay 2%. But they're they're not necessarily paid in right well, that, that are redeemable in Becky's that are no that are redeemable in Barbies in the bearer bond oh. Barbies okay and that are circulating as so I've got money. Becky's and Barbies <laughs> that's that's a cruel that that's is just cruel. Oh, that's cruel. Okay. Oh, that is cruel wait a minute wait a minute so. So I've got the USC currency with a picture of a deer on the buck. Right. Right? And I've got a picture of the guy in black on the 20 or the 5. Which right, is the cash. The, the cash, cash, yes. Yeah. Right? And then there's the saw buck. Which right? is, which which is ten. a right? sawhorse. Sawhorse. Okay, so the USC currency is already a series of bad puns. <laughs> and don't forget the C note. For the hundred. Right. <laughs> Good point. It's got David's profile like on it. Okay. <laughs> Somebody okay, Paula. I don't think for that those is a pun. for those who didn't follow your pun. Send team to see you know it's what's a C note? A C note is the hundred dollar bill. But what's on it? A C note. Ding like a musical note. Yeah, a musical note. Yeah, musical note. Right. So okay. C. Right. Right. So Garrett did that for right. one of the okay. illustrations. Right. <laughs> so we've got bucks and cash and saw bucks and C notes. That's bad. And then is there any dough? Becky's. Yeah, dough. Don't is it an the eight hundred hertz C or an eight eighty hertz C? Right. Now the Beckys all just have Rebecca uh, Stearns standing with one hand as up the, like as the Statue, Statue of Liberty. Liberty. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the Beckys come in varying denominations. Oh, the Barbies. The Barbies come in varying denominations. Some of them have Susan, some of them have... Uh, the Barbies have the girls' portraits? Yeah. <laughs> oh, God! <laughs> Why not? These are some of the richest people in the world. Yeah. I understand that. And but they're what cute, we just too. said, what yeah, we just yeah. said yeah. is Bill Gates and Warren Buffett issue their own currency and put their picture on. Why not? Except well, that it's a better looking than the whole point about money is that any money money is worth what you believe it is. And so Becky's what well, you can convince your thank you, your point of sale and that these the money are backed by by the army of the USC and by the richest women in the world. So full faith and credit. Money is just an idea backed by confidence. Right. Mm -hmm. So and any confidence man knows that. <laughs> 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 How many how many science fiction series have panels at conventions doing economic analysis of their imaginary currencies? <laughs> that would be us. One. That would be us. And, uh, uh, well, I, would, I wouldn't put a task wheel of time, but you know. Okay. Yeah, because Brandon's insane. Right, but, but yeah. you understand where I'm going. Yeah. This is one other area where we push the envelope really hard. And maybe and it's starting the to idea push that there's an envelope at all. <laughs> And of so, course, that book is not yet finished, although we have a contract for it. It's not the finished. Well, it's and, yeah, yeah, the and, well, it's not and so that is subject to change. Right. But, and, uh, well, one thing's probably already changed. Apparently, yeah. lots of things are subject to change when Eric said yeah, we just, can't talk about it. <laughs> well, no, but but you already know, know from the dough that the Eric likes bad puns, so yeah, it's right, pretty right. safe. Well, and the Beckys are already published. You know, at least the Russians stuck with rubles. Thank you. 
<laughs> yes, well, so it could be far. Rebels. Yeah, but what did they put on the printed <laughs> money? <laughs> <laughs> what, Actually, I think they put the czar on the printed money. That's a really good point. You're, you're, you're going to... Yeah, 1636, the Kremlin Games requires a sequel. Because when we finish it... Yeah, it's pretty cliffhanger. <laughs> It's utterly it smart color, but when we finish it, things are up in the air. Up in the air. <laughs> <laughs> Almost literally, come to think of it. <laughs> You'll know September of next year, and well, in air, some of us will know before that. <laughs> there, with any luck, there will be an ER. So, hi, Kim. Slavery and um, innovation yes. attractors. Yes. Since Rick brought up Russia and serfdom, right. where clearly uh, the slavery. Okay, here's. Okay. Let me Remember, go into slavery and, and yeah, yeah, innovation yeah, yeah. attractors just a little bit more. There is a popular truism that is true only in one sense, but mostly used in the other. The popular truism is that slavery cannot compete with free industry. This is absolutely true so far as the state is concerned, whether the state is the slaveholder or not. Okay, This is why Russia couldn't compete with the U.S. It's why the South couldn't compete with the North. It is absolutely true on a national or, st or state level. It is not true and never has been at any point in history true on an individual level. Right. A right. slave, an individual slave owner versus somebody who's got to pay his employees, the slave owner will make more profit every time. There are no exceptions. Well, no. Okay. no. Even the V. <laughs> The Germans use slave labor to make the V-2 rockets. I don't care how technical it is. Okay. Yeah, but what about producti productivity hit? Productivity hit is there, but it does not compensate for the fact that you're not paying your people. But And okay, barely I mean, feeding them. We'll have a conversation about Chinese history sometime. And the Chinese ability. history includes a lot of... I know, know, and that's why I'm saying we'll talk. Um, <laughs> but... but in any event, okay, so we know, because Eric said over and over and over again in snarking session after snarking session and in print, he said that, that as the stories move east, that as we move out of Grantville, and the, the interesting part of what's going on moves towards Poland and Bohemia and Austria and Istanbul, Istanbul and Russia, as the stories like move east, that his, his personal giant goal, the overriding arch goal, is to prevent the second serfdom. Okay, so back to this, these two attractors. The slavery attractor is very real because it's more profitable to have slaves at any given point. Ten years from now, you'd be doing better with free labor, but today, your profits are greater if you've got slaves, or if your employees are poorly paid, or if you can get away with tying them to you by health care, or if you can do anything that makes it so that your Robert employers Barrett. cannot effectively quit and go out into the marketplace and argue different Yeah, you own, you own your soul to the company store, right? If you can do that, however, whether you call it slavery, the company store, or any of a number of other things, including political prisons in China, uh, you can make more money. And there is a, that's a powerful motive for the people in the 1632 universes, especially if you're competing with an, uh, a new industry. One of the things that Marx brought out, and I'm not a Marxist by any stretch, but one of the things that he got right. There he is. <laughs> uh, one of the things that he got right is that given their, when all of a sudden the uh, craftsmen had to compete with industry, 
Not only did industry misplead its employees, but craftsmen started mistreating their employees even worse mm -hmm. because they couldn't because they couldn't compete any other way. It's a it's a it becomes a race to the bottom right. in terms of how you treat people. And in the 1632 universe, there is a great deal of danger of that, especially in places that have lesser, for whatever political or circumstantial reasons, lesser access to the innovation, or simply because there's not enough of it. I mean, Which it's is already why going the on. committees will continue to be actively doing their work to organize labor throughout. And folks, which is also why you're utterly justified when you write a story and having a sweatshop or uh, an abusive, because th if you're, if you've got five sewing machines and your opponent and no, or if you've got people sewing by hand and your opponent has sewing machines, you've got to work those people to death to try to have any hope of competing with the people with sewing machines. And it's bad, it's really bad for the people who don't have it, and there's no way that they can produce enough for everybody to have it. And inevitably then you get an industrial collapse of that segment of the industry in the long run. In the long run, but it, But there's a lot of people that die before you get in the long run. Uh, that, not arguing. Yeah. I know. That basically, that, what, I mean, I, what I am pointing out is thing. that <coughs> one of the economic that effects slavery. of this is it's that in that area slavery. where you're not the, the rich, uh, the rich guy who has a factory and treats your employees well because, well, your daddy was worked in, uh, worked in the coal mine. Uh, outside that area, when you're the master, that master tailor, and you had 20 journeymen working for you, and uh, 30 apprentices before the ring of fire, and now you're competing with closing out of, clothing from sewing machines, you're working your apprentices and you're starving them. Not because you want to, but because you can't compete any other way. The same thing happened in, in early in one of the stories that we wrote. It didn't make it in, didn't make the cut into the print, but the background material made it very clear when we were stringing the first telegraphs, you know, to modular, <coughs> and we needed insulators. And you have to order insulators from somebody. You've got to order them from somebody that's doing porcelain or glass. Glass was cheaper. But how are, how are the glass makers going to make, you know, literally tens of thousands of insulators? Well, the answer is the apprentices are going to be pulling some really long hours. You know, With hot glass. Oh, yeah. That's all kinds of fun. Because there's nothing else you can do. This is little boys with no hands. Right. Well, and the thing is, you know, the they don't have to. An insulator doesn't have to be as high tech as a a bottle. Okay. No, I mean, it does But it's still got to be approximately. It does have to. Shape or it doesn't work. Right. It does have to do that, but it doesn't. It's not as high tech. So you're going to give it to the lowest tech. Yeah, you're going to give it to the crappy apprentices who you're going to stand over with whips. I mean, you know, it's just bad. But what? Yeah. Else if you, you don't do turn out fifty of these, you don't get dinner. Right. Okay. Beyond that, technology and the economic fix. Uh, for example, the worst possible thing that could stagger into the air, right, airplane, you know, a, a, a airplane, flying disaster, yeah, whatever. a flying disaster of an airplane that's absolutely not economic is still going to be used and half to death because yeah. the scarcity of, of anything capable of doing the function, right? Yeah. But yes, it's it not, air, not airplanes. How about machine tools? Yeah, uh, yeah sure. Yeah. All of it. The, the big kicker is that the, the worst effects of the ring of fire are 